That was a blessing, amen? Yes, absolutely it was. I'm thankful for our musicians. They use their talents for the Lord. Very, very appreciative and thankful of that. And so, all right, church, let's take our Bibles here uh, tonight to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 is where we're going to be uh, reading from. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Um, I had uh, given Brother Dave uh, the wrong reference. It's, it says that we're going to start in verse 11. We're actually going to be starting in verse 12. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, begin reading in verse number 12 is uh, where we're going to pick up our reading. And But before I do that, you, you know, I just want to just say this. Um, I love Sunday night church. I love Sunday night church. I was sitting with somebody in the office and just talking to them about it and just said, you know, there's just, there's just something about the spirit of Sunday evening church. And, you know, because, listen, it, this is, it's the church family. It's the church family. So I'm very, very thankful for this church Sunday evenings. So let's all stand. If you're able, physically able, and have honor and respect for the reading of God's word, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Uh, begin reading in verse number 12. <clears throat> the Bible says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye. That's kind of trippy, isn't it? There's a visual there. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet but one body. And we're going to stop right there. And, and church, I, I, the title of this message is this. The church body, every piece is important. Every piece is important in the church body. So let's have a word of prayer, and then you can be seated here tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for just the spirit already of your church. And Lord, we do ask you that you'd help us, Father, to glean from the word tonight. Father, I do pray for those who do desire to be here, uh, but Lord, but they're just physically not able. And Lord, I know that there's some, Father, who are not feeling well, and Lord, I pray for them. I pray that you just keep them safe and bring them back to steady health. And but Father, as those who are tuning in through live stream or, and those who are gathered here, Father, together, Lord, I pray that it would be a prof profitable time, Lord, in the word. And Lord, may we understand what you're saying and Father, we pray that you'd work in a great way. We love you. Thank you, Lord, for the music. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to sing praises to you. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to give praise to you. And Lord, I ask you to please be with us now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Last week, uh, we saw how the Apostle Paul was letting the church of Corinth know that the members of the church of Corinth, they had been gifted spiritually spiritually speaking the apostle paul said that they that the holy spirit of god he uh he had divided gifts unto them severally unto every man severally meaning that in that local new testament church in the church of corinth the apostle paul said that every single person in the church they had some sort of gift and they, and they had some sort of gift to contribute and listen what they were doing is that they were some of them were given the gift of speaking in tongues. And of course, we've already talked about that as a, that's an actual language. And some were given the, the gift of interpreting tongues. And, and so what they were doing, though, within the church is that they were using that gift and saying this, well, we must be more spiritual than them because we have this gift. No, but, but the truth of the matter is, Paul says, no, 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 no. Every single one with you within the church has some sort of spiritual gift, but it's never to elevate yourself. It's never to say, well, look how spiritual I am. No, it's not about elevating self. It's not about pride. But it's for the benefit of the body. 
for the benefit of the church. That's what the gifts are for. Now, evidently, I mean, if we read chapter number 12 and chapter 13, and even maybe even in a little bit in chapter 14, we will come to realize that there were the members of the church that they seemed to be discontent with the gifts that God had given them. Uh, discontent. I, I mean, we, we talked about it, how that God had given every member a gift already. And we applied that last week by saying, listen, Calvary Baptist Church, let, let's, let's talk about us right here. Let's not take our focus off the Church of Corinth, but let's talk about us. Listen, you have a gift. Every single one of us has a gift to some degree. And that gift is not to elevate self. That gift is not to elevate, say, look how spiritual I am. No, that gift is for the benefit of someone else. Benefit of the church. I, I mean, think of it this way. Somebody else is depending on you to use your gift. Somebody else is depending on you. Another church member might be hurting. Another church member might need minister to. So we need to utilize our gifts that God has given us for the benefit of the church. However, the problem was that in the church of Corinth, everyone wanted like the sensational gifts. Everyone wanted the, the gifts that would be easily recognized. Back then, I mean, what Paul talks about tongues quite a bit. So it would be like everybody wanting the same gift. Everyone wanting the, to be able to speak in tongues. But what Paul is trying to get them to understand is, is that that is not how God designed the church body to function. He, did, he didn't utilize or he didn't create the church body for everybody to have the same gifts. And so to help them understand that, here's Paul and he uses an analogy of the anatomy of the human body. Okay, look, look at verse number 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So, so Paul, he's trying to keep it simple here. And he's saying this, your body, your physical body has many members. In case you didn't know that, your body has physical, uh, uh, your physical body has many members. So here's just a little bit of uh, fun facts. Your body consists of 206 bones in the human body. 206 bones. There are 79 organs in the human body. There's 206 bones, 70, uh, 79 organs, 10 toes, 2 lips, 2 ears, and 1 nose. And you splice those things all together, and you got the human body. And some other things as well. But, 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 but the point is this. Listen, your physical body has uh, different members. Has, has different members, and, and because it has different members, it all forms one body. And listen, it's the same way with the church body. Many members, one church, one body. And then we get into verses 12 and 13. And then in verses 12 and 13, there, there's room for discussion about church doctrine and how that the church body is the body of Christ. Calvary Baptist Church, we are the body of Christ. Come on. We're the body of Christ. Uh, and, and of course, there's a lot of people that believe that there is an invisible and universal church. And uh, meaning that, listen, when a person gets saved, then they automatically become a part of the church, so to speak. But, but, but listen, a, a person can be saved, but still not be a part of a church body. A person can be saved, and, and listen, uh, they're a part of the family of God. Come on. They're a part of the family of God, but, they are, but they're still, uh, still not a member of a church. Now, in Acts chapter number 2, we see that there were, people were saved, and they were baptized, and then they were added to the church. Hey, hey, listen, church family. God wants believers to be a part of a local New Testament church. He, he, he wants that. In fact, every time a church is referenced in the New Testament, it is referenced as a Local, get this, visible place. It is a local, visible assembly of born-again believers. Come on, you, you can read about the church of Corinth. You can read about the church of Galatia. You can read about the church of Ephesus. You can read about the church of Thessalonica. Listen, every single time church is mentioned, it is referencing to a local body of believers. 
I mean, even the Greek word for church is ekklesia. And the, the word ekklesia means this, a called out assembly. So here's the thing. If we're going to have church, assembly required. You ever gone, you went and bought gifts for your kids or whatever, and, and on the box it says, assembly required? If they're, if they're, if they're going to, if that toy or whatever it is that's going to function right, then assembly must be required. Hey, listen, if we are going to be a local New Testament church, the way the Bible describes a local New Testament church to be, listen, therefore, assembly required. Yeah. Now, there will come a day, though, when uh, Christ, the rapture happens, and Praise God, we're called out of here. Uh, listen, then the church will be called out. But, but, and, and that's why people think, well, they're, they're a part of the church because they're going to get called out. Well, no, now listen, even when we're called out during the rapture, we will all be assembled together. We will all be there together. So there still will be assembling when the rapture takes place. Okay, so what does it mean, though? What does verse number 13 mean? Uh, it says, for by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Well, what does that mean when he's talking about being baptized into one body? OK, now, 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 listen. Um, upon salvation. A person is placed in Christ. How many of you believe with that? You are placed in the Lord Jesus Christ upon salvation. That is a spiritual act that is done by the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of God does that. Salvation is when you turn to Christ, you repent of your sin, and the Spirit of God puts you in Christ. And then when it, the, the latter part of the verse where it says that all made to drink into one spirit, listen, all that is referencing, is that all that it means is that, listen, there was a spiritual experience that happened to the believer when they were placed in Christ. Something happened to them. And, and uh, it doesn't matter if they were Jew. It doesn't matter if they're Gentile. It doesn't matter if they were, if they were bond or free. It doesn't matter if they were a slave or a free man. And, and all that matters is this, that when they got saved, they were placed in Christ by the Holy Spirit of God. Now, listen, that expression... The way that that is expressed through the local New Testament church today is when the members come through by believers baptism. When, 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 when we uh, fill up the baptistry and someone wants to partake and be a member of the church through baptism. Listen, what they are saying is I ask the person, I says, have you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? And they say, yes, we have. And of course, baptism is a picture of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for them. He lived for them, he died for them, and he resurrected again so that they can walk in newness of life. When that picture is this, the Spirit of God put them in Christ. Okay. Calvary Baptist Church, as a local New Testament church, based on the authority of God's word, I can confidently say that we are the body of Christ and Jesus is our head. What's that mean? He's our head. He's in charge. Yeah. But the main point that Paul is trying to get across here is that just like there are members that make up the physical body, there are members that make up the church body. Paul explains that the church body is made up of many members. Verse 14 says, for the body is not one member, but many. And then he uses an analogy of the human body to make a point about the church body. Now look at verse number 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Uh, uh, okay, now, now, now I think Paul's trying to be a little silly here. Uh, I, I think he is. I think the Apostle Paul maybe have a little bit of a sense of humor here, but he, but he is trying to make a point when he says this. It's a, if the foot shall say, now can you imagine if your foot grew a mouth? Your foot grew a mouth, and then all of a sudden the foot says, because I'm not the hand, I don't identify as being part of the body. Because I'm not the hand, I don't want to be a part of the body. <laughs> uh, pretty weird. Pretty weird. I, I, I mean, it would be maybe equivalent. The, the foot might have complaints about the hand. I, I mean, the foot might say, listen, the hand gets seen. The hand is the one who greets people. 
The hand is the one that's used to make expressions with. The hand is the hand is gets to praise the Lord. The, the, the hand gets all the recognition. Everybody looks at the hand. Everybody gets to do that. I'm just a foot. I get covered up. I get stepped on. And not only that, I stink. It stinks to be the foot. <laughs> but if the foot were to say, well, I'm not a part of the body. D does that make it so? No, uh, of course not. It's still part of the body. But, 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 but come, on, come on now. If we're honest with ourselves, how important are our feet? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very important are our feet. I know that there's many of us, uh, several of us in here, we have like uh, smart watches. And of course, they, you track your steps. You know, you're trying to track your steps. You, you, you it count your calories. It tells you how far you walked and all those types of things. Now, can you imagine? Do that on your hands. <laughs> okay, some of you don't think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Get up tomorrow, go to work, and everything that you would do with your hands, use your feet. And you will realize your feet were not made to do what your hands are made to do. I don't even think you need to realize that. I think you already know that. Listen, church, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence by any means. Listen, Paul is. No, I'm just kidding. No. No, 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 no. no. Paul, he's using this analogy here. And he's saying, listen, just because your foot says, because I'm not the hand, then I don't want to be a part of the body. Does that make that so? No, of, of course not. Look at verse 16, it says, and if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Yeah, I mean, it's the same principle with the ear. It's, a, it's the same illustration. Listen, if the ear were to complain about the eye, what would the ear say? Everybody looks at the eyes. Eyes are pretty. Everybody says, look at that beautiful baby's eyes. They make songs about eyes. They make poems about eyes. I'm just an ear. No one looks at the ears. Unless we stick out. No, 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 no one compliments the ears. No one says, hey, wow, you have such beautiful ears. No one ever says that. What, what, what's the deal with the ears? We get wax. We get tugged on by toddlers and grandparents. We, we get cold in the winter. We need to be covered up. We hurt when it's cold outside. And not only that, we get impaled by earrings. <laughs> I don't want to be an ear. I want to be an eye. Hey, but listen. Ears are important. Your ears are important. The ear is important. Listen, what, what's, what's Paul's point here? I mean, he, he sounded really silly. He's talking about feet wanting to be hands. He's talking about ears wanting to be eyes. Well, what, what's the point he's trying to make? Well, 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 listen, evidently there were some in the church of Corinth that basically said this. If I don't have a prominent role, then I don't want a role at all. If I can't be seen in a prominent role within the church and within the ministries, then therefore, listen, I don't want to be involved at all whatsoever. But, but, but Paul's point was this. Wherever it is that God puts you in the body, wherever it is that God placed you in the body of the church, listen, you are valuable. You are valuable, church family. You are important when you're in the body. Verse 17 says, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Listen, what good does it do if God blesses everybody with the exact same gifts? What good does it do? What, what good does it do if God makes everybody in Calvary Baptist Church the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church? What? No good. It does no good. And, and, so, and then he uses another analogy. He says, if the whole body were an eye. That's a strange visual. It's a strange visual. If the whole body were an eye, then where were the hearing? And listen, if the whole body, and if, if the whole body were the hearing, then, then uh, the, and if the whole, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Verse eighteen. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, 
as it hath pleased him. Here's here's what Paul's point is. Okay, here, here it is. That God placed every part of the church body where he wants it. He placed the church body, every part of the church body, where he wants it. Therefore, since God placed it there, it's important. Yeah. Important how? So that the church can function the way he designed it to function. So that the church can accomplish what he desired for the church to accomplish. And, and, and listen, church, I, I want to make this clear to us here. Listen, if you're here tonight, listen, this applies to each and every one of us as a church family. This applies to all of us. Listen, as a member of Calvary Baptist Church, you need to know this. You are where God placed you. Therefore, it's important. It's important. Okay, now, now listen to this. If God placed you here, don't misplace yourself. If God placed you here, then don't misplace yourself. You know, sometimes many people, they feel like they're unimportant in church. Or sometimes they, they feel like they don't fit in in church. Or sometimes they say, well, well, I just don't click well with others in church. And because of their feelings, they might come to a point in their mind and say, well, I think I'm just going to go elsewhere. I think I'm just going to church hop elsewhere. And, and, and listen, this is oftentimes when, when people, when they get out of church, they might church hop to a couple different churches. And they might attend church there for maybe uh, maybe a couple weeks, maybe even a month, maybe even two months. But, but usually most of, the, most of the time, most of the case is that they just eventually get out of church entirely. But why does this happen? Why does it happen that, that people, they often church hop and they get out and they say, well, I just didn't feel like I was part of the church. I didn't feel like I was, I didn't click well with the members. I, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it there necessarily. It just wasn't for me. And people, they church hop from this church to that church to this church to that church. Well, well listen, I'm, I'm not going to say that this is the reason all the time. But I am going to say this, this could be a main factor, a main reason. And it could be because this, an ear wanted to become an eye. An ear wanted to become an eye. Church, listen to this. Be willing to serve the Lord with whatever gifts you have through the local church. With whatever, whatever gifts God's given you or whatever gifts God's blessed you with, then be willing to serve. Listen, be willing to grow where he placed you. Where he puts you. Why? Because God puts you here. And if God planted you here, then grow where you're planted. Hey, listen, you might be a member. That might not be an eye that everybody looks at. You might, not, you might be a member of Calvary Baptist Church, and you might not be a hand that everybody sees. But here's the thing. God puts you here. You need to know this. You are valuable to the body. Amen. You're valuable to the body, church. And, and, and I mean, you're so valuable. Uh, listen, we're going to get into it next week, but, but we're so valuable. Listen, that... A, a healthy church that when one church member hurts, the whole church should hurt. The whole church should hurt when one member's hurting. We should. And, and, and listen, it's just kind of a silly illustration with that. How many have ever stumped your toe before? <laughs> you stumped your toe. And, and listen, when you stump your toe, your whole body convulses. I don't know the science behind it, but when you stump your toe, your mouth tends to open. I don't know, but it, but you know why your whole body is reacting to just one little piggy that ran into the wrong market, you know. Yeah. Your whole body's convulsing. Hey, here's the thing, church. When one of us is hurting, we all should hurt. Because we're part of the body. You are part of the body. You are valuable to the church. And, and listen, you might not be the eye. You not, might not be the hand. Listen, you might be a, a church member who's involved behind closed doors. You might be a church member that's involved and, and does things that nobody else sees. You might be a church member that's involved and, and you do things and no one else gives you recognition for it. No one else pats you on the back. But listen, I want to let you know that there's one in heaven who keeps really good records. 
who, who, who watches everything, church family. And, and, and listen, just because you're not in the public eye, just because you're not on the platform, or just because you're not on uh, an instrumentalist, or, or just because you're, you're not seen on a regular basis, doesn't mean that you're not valuable. No, God placed you here, so stay here and grow where God puts you because you're valuable. You are. Listen, praise God for those who vacuum. Praise God for those who vacuum the sanctuary. Praise God for those who clean windows. Praise God for those who, who, who set up and tear down after uh, Sunday school breakfast. Those are, praise God for that. Pra praise God for those who clean the bathrooms. Praise God for those who, who gave up the offering. You serve in the Lord through the offerings. Praise God for those who count the offerings. Praise God for those who make the deposits. Praise God for those who are willing to invite people to church. Praise God for those who, may, who might be a foot and no one sees. But they use their talent as being feet and going door to door and canvassing neighborhoods with the gospel tracts and inviting people to church. Listen, praise God for feet. Praise God for them. Praise God for that role because, listen, church, whatever role that you're in, get involved in that role. Understand your talent that God has given you, that, that, that spiritual gift that God has given you, and get involved. Because, listen, as we are involved together as a church, we can function and accomplish what God wants us to function and accomplish. A musical conductor was conducting a symphony. One of the musicians was struggling with his instrument and, and thinking no one would notice. He decided to fake it. And not to really play. Sounds like something I would do, honestly. I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend. <laughs> but then when it was time to play, the conductor stopped everything and said, wait a minute, someone's not playing their part. Someone's not playing. Hey, church family, you might think Listen, don't don't believe the devil when the devil whispers in your ear and says this. If you quit going to church, no one's even going to miss you. Don't believe that. If you quit going to church, no one's going to even notice that you're gone. No one would even care that you're gone. But 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 listen, 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 listen. If God placed you here, you have a role and there's a conductor in heaven who knows you're not where you should be. He placed you here and you have a very important role within the church. So why should we be? Why should we get involved? Why, why should we serve even when no one else is paying attention? As, so as a church, we can function according to his design. Church family, what is the purpose of the local New Testament church? The gospel. That's the purpose. That's the function that God wants us to, to be involved in. Our main function is that the gospel be made known. To see to it that the Great Commission be fulfilled here in Sterling, Colorado. Not just here in Sterling, Colorado, but in missionaries around the world. That the gospel would make its way just not across the street, but, but around the world as well. That, that's the Great Commission here. But, but listen, if we're going to have our part, play our part as a church body. If we, as you're going to play your part as being a church member... And seeing that the Great Commission be fulfilled, then understand this, church family, it will take all of you. Yeah. It will take all of us to see to it that the commission be fulfilled. Yeah. So listen, wherever God has you, wherever God's placed you, you might be... Uh, a foot, you might be a hand, you might be an ear, but all of those are valuable. Hey, listen, probably one of the, some of the, <laughs> the most important parts of the human anatomy are the parts that are not seen. The most important parts. Listen, if I can see your liver, there's something wrong. There's something drastically wrong if I can see your liver. There's something drastically wrong if I can see your lungs. There's something drastically, drastically wrong if I can see your spleen. Oh yeah, something drastically wrong. But you know what? It's often the things that are unseen. It's often the things that go without notice. That keep the body going. That keep the body in function. And church family, I just want to say this to you. I want to encourage you with this. And then and seriously, I'm done. God placed you here. Know this, you are valuable. You are important. 
because God placed you here. And don't compare yourself with other believers and say, well, I'm not as talented as they are. I'm not as talented as they are. I'm not as talented as they are. No, no, listen, you have a role. You have a role. So embrace that role and contribute to the body so that we as a church can accomplish and do what God designed this church to do. And that is the great commission. People come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but it will take all of us church. It will take all of us functioning together as a body as we follow our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. Church member, you're valuable. Don't believe that you're not. You're valuable. Don't believe Satan in saying that you're not. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter what stage of life that you're in. From the youngest saint to the oldest saint, you're valuable here in the church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, I do pray, Lord, that you, you help us, Lord, to understand.